What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Bioshock Infinite! So at the end of the last video there, I kind of ran out of time, but I was elaborating further on the, uh, the thing with that audio diary there, and I stupidly threw a Devil's Kiss bomb at this fireman here, but I'll quickly finish him off with the uh, undertow and uh, shock jockey combination there. Which has proved very effective. Had a quick kill against him. Um, but yeah, to elaborate further on that uh, audio diary, that uh, voxophone there, rather, um, Preston, he, uh, he went to go, uh, assassinate Booker, and, uh, you know, he, he was still dealing with what happened with the kid in the, uh, in the sky rails there that, uh, the Vox had sent as their, uh, suicide martyr or whatever, and, uh, so he, um, I guess he met up with Parallel World Booker, um, and, uh, they ended up... He ended up having a change of heart and is now coming after Comstock because of that kid. Um, so, unfortunately, that's actually the end of his story as far as the game is concerned. We don't ever see the, we don't ever see him in the game. He, we don't ever see him come after Comstock or have any other uh, Voxophones that follow up on that. Um, so, as far as we know, the version of him in this world it might be dead. Um, maybe we just got to you know the end of the game before he had a chance to move. Uh, or maybe the Vox got him, you know, because he essentially turned on, or he was still the enemy of the Vox, even though he was an uh, enemy of Comstock at that point. They weren't gonna, they're not um, keen to choose sides like that. Anyway, uh, brief encounter down there. There was actually a couple enemies using the heater against us down there, which is very, very uncommon, as I've said. As, as uncommon as the weapon is itself, it's even more uncommon to see a Vox actually using it. Um, but this is a pretty tricky encounter up here. We've got a Patriot. If I didn't mention before in uh, the last video, the Vox Patriots are really weird looking, and I think they have like they have devil horns and they have the Abraham Lincoln coat and hat on, and they just look really silly. But I love them. And uh, if I don't, really don't have a lot of good cover here, and I also don't have a lot of ammo for either of these weapons right now, so I'm gonna try to use the secondary function of the undertow to bring one of these guys close to me, so I can finish them off. I should be able to if I could actually hit anything today. I could get a oh god that was gruesome. Get a quick headshot on these guys and finish them off. And you can always run. I think I, I can run back down to this vending machine and buy more ammo, um, if that's what this vending machine is for. It could be something else. I can just keep that charge until I find an enemy that it, it will target and then just finish them off. Pretty effective against that guy. I may want to do it for the Patriot, depending. But I'm kind of trying to weed out the enemies right now before I even. Uh, draw any attention to that guy. I laid down some Vigor Traps with the uh, Shock Jockey when I started this encounter, but they just don't seem to be doing very much. No enemies have ran into them yet. Really running low on ammo. And I still can't hit anything. I should probably get a new weapon. Last shot. Let's make it count. Alright. There was a bar back there called the uh, the Salty Oyster Bar. Uh, we can't... There's uh, certain things we can search in there right now, but we can't explore all of it until we go to one of the areas coming up here. So I just decided to skip it for now until we can explore the entire thing. So I, did, I didn't, you know, deliberately just miss it. Alright, now let's see if we can get this Patriot stun locked here. I had the Undertow had affected him, and the uh, Shock Jockey had, and I'm, as I, I'm just emptying this thing's magazine while I go down here to search some more. Oh, he's coming at me. I don't have a lot of health. Oh, man, that was close. And he dropped my shields. I would have been dead for sure. And conveniently, he actually gave me two more uh, 45 Long Colt um, that I can use here for the... Uh, or percussion caps, whatever the hell they are. Um, for the hand cannon. I'd be willing to bet that they're 45 Long Colt. Yeah, I know I mentioned before how I feel like the Vox Repeater is actually pretty good uh, compared to many of the other Vox weapons uh, because it deals so much concentrated damage. Okay, this is not what I'd hoped for. This is actually a weapon upgrade station. Uh, hopefully I can still get a damage increase for the single weapons I care about. There's a damage boost for the uh, hand cannon and the RPG there. I'll definitely want to get that. 
Damage boost too for the carbine. Uh, I would recommend that, but I don't know if I'll actually get it or not. I'm more concerned about the RPG for now, especially for late game coming up here. That'll do. Gee, thanks, Elizabeth. It's not like I needed ammo or anything. I know there was there was one of these Tesla coils in an encounter before uh, back in Fengshan with the handyman, um, and. Uh, Really, it's not that great, uh, especially against the handyman because he's immune to electricity. So I really don't know even know why it's in that encounter. But uh, you can drag enemies into it with the undertow, and it will kill them and electrocute them and that kind of thing. And um, but these guys are so far away from us, it's really not that effective to use right now. If I had the salts to actually use the undertow, I would use it, but I don't. So kind of a useless tear right now. Um, there's also. I'm gonna be wanted. I'm going to want to be getting it soon. There is a tear in this encounter, and or in this room rather, that has a uh, a volley gun. So I dropped my splash damage weapon for the repeater here, so I could take out these guys and continue forward. Um, but I will be dropping the repeater for the volley gun whenever I find it. You may be asking, how come I didn't use the volley gun in, in that encounter if I was so low on ammo? And basically the answer is, you know, that I'm going to have to backtrack through here a couple times. And I really didn't want to use all the resources in this in, in this area on the first encounter. Alright, that ought to save us for a little while. Come back and get the rest of the ammo later. And now I have five shots for the uh, hand cannon. Yeah, there, there are a couple of uh, potentially random encounters in this area, just because of the size of it and the fact that you are backtracking a little bit. And I died there. I was hoping the murder of crows would stop them from shooting at me. Oh well, we got, we got pretty far and we got some more ammo for the hand cannon out of that, so whatever. I find myself very reluctant to use the tears that are um, cover, just like spawning in cover in the environment, because it really seems like it's not all that useful. Like I'd rather have the tear be something else. Um, although I can't, I do appreciate sometimes having it there if there's no cover around. Much hey, obliged. All right, now we can move on. We're gonna have Elizabeth pick that lock there. In the last video, I was kind of talking over parts of this, but I, I want to go over it just to kind of give you that guys the gist of the account of that uh, dialogue there. There was a, uh, see this is where I actually appreciate the cover. <laughs> There's some snipers in this encounter actually, and I definitely want to, I'm going to drag them towards me with the undertow, and just completely defeat the purpose of them being snipers. Um, <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, of course. I like their outfits, I like, I like the way the snipers look, you can really get to see them up close. And they so generously gave me their uh, 1903 Springfield, so I can continue on with that. Elizabeth. Back to the sniper rifle after using the hand cannon for so long. I I'm flip-flopping back and forth a lot, if you haven't noticed. Um, that freight hook there, you can get up on top of that bridge and search up there, or fight the snipers from behind if you want to, that way. Um, I'm not going to be taking advantage of that right now, because I want to go in the shop over here. But anyway, Elizabeth's picking another lock, so I should talk about what I was going to say before. Um... The uh, the dialogue in the last video, she was talking about how the songbird was her friend when she was a kid because it was basically all she had, and he tried to keep her, you know, entertained and essentially raised her um, and brought her books and everything. But now she hates him because she was keeping her locked up in a cage, essentially. His money means the Lutes field could become the Lutes tear, a window between worlds, a window through which you and I might finally be together. I'm here to find a specific audio diary, not the one I just listened to, but another one that's going to trigger a, um, a sequence. Sally. And an encounter, apparently. This is another random encounter. These guys are not supposed to be here. Closet. 
So whoever this Frank guy is, there's a lot of, uh, there's something very important that he cares a lot about um, that's locked up in that salty oyster bar. So we better go over there and find out what that is. Maybe it's something valuable. Or maybe it's a person that's in trouble. Um, like I said, there's other stuff we want to get there too. Um, but you, as far as me wanting to get as many Voxophones as I can, I'm not going to get all of them, but I want to get as many of them as I know where they are. Um, but I do want to get all the, you know, part of me getting, wanting to get all the infusions and all of the uh, uh, gear that I can find as well. I need to explore all these optional areas. That was basically my condition for this Let's Play, was getting exploring all optional areas. So, took out these guys, part of that random encounter. Bucking Bronco was very effective. I got the achievement for getting a certain amount of kills with a volley gun as well. Which uh, went by pretty fast, honestly. We should have all the other achievements from my main weapons I care about. Maybe not the RPG quite yet. We'll see. Alright, so I backtracked uh, back over to the Salty Oyster Bar off screen. Um, I, I bypassed the whole encounter's worth of enemies. There's still that gun automaton up there I didn't use. There's still an encounter behind me there. I'm going to try to skip out on that. There's a group of guys waiting to ambush us in here, so I'm already prepared for them. They're not attacking Elizabeth, as you can see. They're waiting for me. But I know they're there. There are a bunch of founders, too, which is the weird part. There are a bunch of founders that have holed up in here. They're not even Vox. Like, it's really strange. One guy's got a shotgun, and he managed to kill me with it, of course. Knew that wasn't going to last long. Well, that kind of sets me back a little bit, which sucks. But anyway, well, let's get back in there and get all the collectibles. Yeah, this, this optional room in here, the switch that unlocks it, will only appear after you pick up the Voxophone that tells you how to find it. So it's really cheap, even if you know where the switch is, you can't abuse it unless you pick up that Voxophone. So uh, there's a switch underneath the cash register here to open up that, that door in front of us there. The bathrooms and all the doors in the back we can get into just fine right now. And we can loot everything in this place right from the start. But this button right here will only appear after you get that Voxophone. It's really aggravating. I didn't know that the first time I played the game. So the most important thing we're going to get in here, uh, above all else, above that infusion and the other Voxophone and everything, is the last Vigor in the game. We're going to get it early, ladies and gentlemen. This is the return to Sender. Apparently that girl he was talking about, Sally, is just a poster there for some reason, uh, although he was freaking out over it. I bet you did. Another Voxophone here. I'll explain what the Return to Sender does when it's relevant. You have been transfused, brother, into a new reality, but your body rejects the cognitive dissonance through confusion and hemorrhage. But we are together, and I will mend you. For what separates us now but a single chromosome? There is an RPG here if I felt so inclined to swap over to the RPG, which I do. And I thought there was something else in here maybe as well. No, I, I think I have everything. Oh, oh, here we go. There's some gear in here. I, I quickly went over what that was. I didn't get a chance to see it. I don't know if there's anything I care about, though. <laughs> if it is, I'll adjust my setup later. So anyway, backtracking back over here off screen again, and this is this is a uh, a one way door essentially. This is like a loading sequence right here. Once you pass through here, because there's a there's a very well uh, there's a very like busy cutscene coming up with a lot of very detailed animation. So they they like delete the rest of the level when you pass through there, so they can make room for more stuff to load. Can you open this. Huh, it's one of those four digit keypad elevator so things from the first Bioshock. Nice little call back there. Let's see if we can find the password for it. This might be it. Why are you so keen on lock picking and code breaking? If you put a person in a cage, they develop an interest in such things. I suppose so. And I won't be locked up again.
Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you promise me. I will stop him. No. That is an oath you cannot keep. But promise me that if it comes to it, you will not let him take me back. It won't come to that. All right? 